So ASTM standards are developed organically, so they could come from any any interest, but they typically come from the industries that the technical committee responsible for it may be operating in. Um, so an organization or an individual would come to the technical committee or they would approach ASTM saying, hey, we, we would like to complete a standard on X, Y, and Z. Um, what would then account, what, what would then happen is they would either know or they would ask us to help them find out what ASTM technical committee that should go under, um, who should be responsible for it, um, who all is involved in that particular subject of interest. So the process begins when um, the committee itself that has been assigned for that project determines that there is a standards need. So what they would do is they would ask them to register what we call a work item, which would just be a project designation for the new work. Um, this could be a, the development of a new standard. This could be the revision of an existing standard um, if they find something that's already out there that needs to be changed. So what they would do is they would then submit it to the technical committee. Uh, the technical committee would delegate it down into uh, what we call our, the subcommittees that are a little bit more focused on their subject matter that they're um, scoped to deal with. Within that, there would either be, um, kind of goes hand in hand, we would have task groups, individual task groups that would develop the standard and hash it out. Kind of, they would be comprised of different stakeholders that would come to the table that all have interest in it, either directly or indirectly, that um, want to shape what the outcome is going to be. So they would draft it at the task group level. From there, once they feel that it's um, acceptable, they would then bring it before the subcommittee. The technical subcommittee would then be comprised of a larger group of individuals that all have interests, um, be it business interests or just general indirect interests as well. Um, they would then go through a formal balloting process. ASTM has a pretty robust online balloting tool that we use where the subcommittee members can then vote on the item that is now up for ballot, the draft standard that is trying to be completed. What they would then do is they would have the opportunity to vote for it with no change, as is. They could vote for it with an editorial change, so if they s find some tweaks through their revision, they can go through and make those changes. They can object to it, or they can abstain. An abstention would be basically saying, I have no interest in this standard. You guys are the experts. You're welcome to move forward with it. Um, negative is a big, voting a negative is objecting to the standard as written. Um, Anyone within that uh, committee that votes negative on a ballot or on a standard, a draft standard, um, they have to have a technical reason why. So they would provide a rationale, which would be their reason why they think that uh, the document shouldn't be approved as is. And they would also provide a recommendation for either a change or a rationale of why it shouldn't be in existence at all. Um, that would then stop the process from there. The subcommittee would then kick it back to, they could either delegate it, um, either respond to the comments themselves or kick it back down to the task group or the technical contact who is essentially the author of the standard. Um, they would then hash out the negative. They would review the suggestions made by the negative voter. They could invite them if they're not already participating and then have that kind of that consensus building process uh, occur in the meetings. Um, once they come to an agreement and the document is uh, passed the subcommittee vote, it then goes on to that main technical committee, which is the next step up. So it's the main technical committee is that overarching um, cluster. So if you look at consumer products, kind of going from top-down approach, there's a consumer product committee. And then down below that, there's a toy safety stand, uh, subcommittee that would, it's a consumer product, but kind of a niche that they would be working in. So going back up through that process, if a toy standard is, uh, is approved by the subcommittee, it goes to that greater, larger consumer product committee. So they would have a chance. So there might be folks in different industries and different sectors of the market that now have access to review it and can uh, vote for or against or abstain, as I had mentioned before. Um, again, if there's a negative that's cast, the group has to deal with it. So it gets kicked back down to the subcommittee, who then delegates it further if they need to. Um, they will address the negative. Um, there are an opportunity, there is an opportunity for at the subcommittee level or at the main committee level for folks to um, disagree with a negative. If they disagree with a the negative, they again have to come up with their reason why. 
um, they don't agree with the negative voter. Um, again, it's got to be a technical basis for it, um, and they have the opportunity to reapproach the negative voter and ask them to withdraw their negative so that they can pass the document forward based off of their feedback or their replies to their comments. Um, the negative voter, again, has the, has the right to disagree with their response and maintain their negative vote. Um, if they do that, the committee has to then agree that they want to, what we consider it, they have to find it what we consider to be not persuasive. It's not a persuasive argument for them to make a change. So what they would do is then they would find that voter not persuasive and it would then pass on to the next level. So assuming that a standard has now, a draft standard has now come out of the technical, um, the uh, task group level, and then it would move on to the subcommittee level. Uh, it would be approved there and negatives are dealt with. It would then move on to the main committee level. Again, negatives would be handled and dealt with. And then from then on, as soon as it passes that main committee level, it would be opened up for the rest of the society and public to review for a brief bit. But after that, if there's no additional comments, the standard will be approved as an ASTM standard.